if you want to have a creative career, I think it's a good thing to set goals and make a plan. Hi guys, welcome to this studio vlog. I want to share a little bit more about how I make my planning because to be honest, I am quite a chaotic, typical, creative kind of person. I learned that, and I learned the hard way, that I really need to plan my work and that I have to set deadlines, make a schedule because otherwise I just don't finish anything. And you know, as a entrepreneur that's not a good thing since I know a lot of people can relate because I get a lot of questions like this I thought it could be interesting to share a little bit of how I start making a plan I'm just going to show you that's way easier than talking like this Hi, this is Caroline from The VoiceOver. I am here talking to a microphone because when I was filming this vlog, I just picked up the camera and started talking and filming what I was doing. But there was not really a great structure in what I was explaining. So that's why I'm here talking to you now. And I tried to make it a little more clear. So I will show you some clips, but you could also just listen to this part. I start by writing down big goals, dreams and events for the new year. Not getting into detail at this point is very important, just as keeping in mind my bigger goals and plans for my life. As soon as you write down these big things, all the smaller goals will start to follow immediately. For example, this year we are moving to rural France and our main goal is to settle there and get started. Like moving my business, moving our stuff, renovating the old barns. We are dreaming of growing as much of our own food as possible. So we want to set up a vegetable garden. We want to get to know more about the area and meet new people. Improving our French is also on the list and a lot of other big things. But as you might notice, just writing all these things down can be very overwhelming or at least that's what it often feels like to me. As a creative entrepreneur, I have to make my own schedule. I don't have a boss who is going to tell me what I should focus on during that month, week or day. And when you feel overwhelmed, you won't see what is important, while the whole point of making the time to create a planning is to be able to focus on what is important. So here are some tips of how I bring some kind of structure into my yearly goals. Turn goals into smart goals. If you haven't heard about smart goals, Google it. <laughs> I'm not a hero in explaining this, so I'm not even going to try, but this will definitely help you. Another tip is not only set business goals, but also personal goals. I write all my yearly goals down in specific categories. Mental goals. These are very personal and important. I always put these on top of my goals list. Physical goals. Here you can write down any specific goals about sports or your weight or whatever. To me it often is more about feeling fit, having enough sleep and as someone struggling with an autoimmune disease it is also about that. Relationship goals. This category is for all kinds of goals about your relationship to others. It can be friends, family, your partner or anyone else. Financial goals. Here I write down things like my revenue goal for the year and how much I want to save each month. Spiritual goals. These are goals like feeling connected to the land where we are going to live and grow our food and remind myself to be mindful. But yet again, this is something very personal. Home goals. Here I write down all the goals I have for our house this year. This is a huge part of my 2021 goals, while over the past couple of years it could be things like at the end of the year I want our house to be more like a home. Learning or study goals? This is quite obvious, you just write down what you would like to learn this year. Artistic goals? This is a category I added since our kids started school because I noticed that I have so much on my plate and on my mind that making jewelry that was a pleasure to my artistic soul just wasn't happening because I didn't prioritize it while it actually is important to me. So that's why it's on this list now. So after you have set smart goals for every category, it is time to turn those goals into plans. 
and it can be helpful to break big things down into smaller steps. For example, if I wrote down that I want to end the year with a house that feels more like a home, I could plan specific tasks during the year to make that happen, like breaking it down into specific rooms and focus on a new room each month. In terms of breaking big things up into smaller steps, I do that by first breaking things down from yearly to quarterly and then monthly goals. From monthly, I go to weekly and then obviously to daily tasks. But it still is very important to go back to that original list of goals in all the different categories. I do this every month. A few years ago, I started bullet journaling. For those of you who don't know, it is a way of planning that starts with a blank notebook that you use to create a planner that completely fits you. Since you only create the pages you actually use and you can add pages that a regular planner doesn't have. I loved bullet journaling and I still do. But all over the internet, there are tons of people who show their artsy and very beautifully decorated bullet journals. And even though I never started really doing that and kept it quite minimal, I did spend too much time making weekly layouts. So now I am using a large Moleskin weekly notebook. It has the days of the week on one side and the page on the right side is always for notes and stuff. As you can see, I already decorated the notebook for the whole year. This is to make planning more fun and I know it might not look professional, but I don't care because it works for me. But as I said, I love bullet journaling, so I combine my weekly planner with another Moleskine of the same size, but this one is a dotted journal like most bullet journals are, which I use for all my lists. For example, a list of video ideas, a list of collection ideas, a wish list of equipment I would like to add to my studio someday, a list of things I actually need and have to buy next time I place an order for my business, a list of gift ideas for each family member or friend, a list of plants we want to add to our garden, a list of plants we already planted and where we planted them, and so on and so on. And every time I think of something, I write it down in the specific lists. And in this book are also my large trackers. Trackers really help me to oversee and organize bigger projects, like creating a new collection. If you would like to know more about how I create trackers for my collections, let me know in the comments and I will add it in an upcoming video. Also in this book are things like maps I draw for the garden, for the renovations. And something that really helps me when I want to transfer my quarterly or monthly plans to specific tasks for the week and for each day is my ideal work week. It is also a page I made in my bullet journal. For every day of the week, I have have a bar with all 24 hours. I mark which hours I am sleeping, when I am eating or getting the kids dressed and ready, when I am doing my morning and evening routine, when I will be working in the garden, when I will be working in the studio, when I will spend time with my family. You could even make your work hours more specific, like which day and hours will you be working at your desk and which of them working in your studio and which are dedicated to customers customer support or appointments, packing orders and so on. My work week actually never is my ideal work week, but making this ideal work week is really helpful when I am writing down specific tasks on specific days in my agenda. About writing these tasks, I write them down in pencil because I plan out most of these tasks on specific days at the beginning of every quarter. Then, on Sundays or Monday morning, I am checking my schedule for the week. Usually, it is quite the same as what I wrote, but almost every week I have to change a few things. I learned that when I see that I can't do a specific task on one day, but it was already written there in pencil, I can erase it, but I have to write it on another day. And this is a rule <laughs> that I make for myself, because I used to just make a weekly or monthly to-do list, but then I would just pick out the fun things and not really plan them on a specific day and then tasks just wouldn't get done. That's why I learned that I really have to plan it on a specific day if I want things to be done. So now I am ready with the voiceover part. Let's go back to the video. 
I get a lot of questions from people who see that I'm a full-time self-employed creative person and also a mom of almost four-year-old twins and people ask me all the time how do you do that how do you do that when I just became a mom to be very honest I did the bare minimum and all the rest of my time I was just surviving <laughs> with our twins and it was really hard because we were born in January 2017 and I was just one year in of successfully planning like I knew what what I could manage to do in one week and in a day and in a month and in a year and I just learned those planning skills and then I became a mom of twins it <laughs> um, it's needless to say that yeah <laughs> I got in a whole new universe of planning but it was really hard because I was just too hard on myself I, I wanted to do too many things um, because I love my job and and I love being a mom and I wanted to be the best in all of that. I can keep talking about being a mom and a creative entrepreneur forever uh, and I will make a video about this topic later on because after almost four years of being a mom I have made I think five or six attempts of a video like that because I think it's a very important topic. So yeah, that will be a whole other video. So for now, um, my planning for this quarter is almost finished because of course uh, once we move I know a lot of things will change, a lot of things I can't really plan in advance, like we are still renovating my studio uh, in France, it's not completely finished, so once we move all my stuff I cannot set my stuff up in the studio again because the studio isn't finished so we first will have to finish the renovation project of the studio and then I can move in all the stuff and the furniture and make it cozy again so all of those renovating things I cannot really plan now because most of it will happen in March and I don't know what the pandemic will do. I don't know if we can have all the materials we need. Um, I don't know what the weather would be like. So I don't know if it's going to be warm or freezing. I don't know. So uh, all of these things will still have an impact. So I cannot plan them, but plans for videos and all of that, those things I can plan ahead. So I did. <laughs> um, I'm going to sit at my bench and start working. <laughs> the only thing I actually have to do before we move to France in just over a month is to finish as much jewelry as I can. I have a lot of ideas for new pieces and unfinished jewelry and some things that are very low in inventory that I all want to yeah, finish before we move because like I said um, my studio in France isn't ready yet so the first month hopefully it's only going to take a month we will be renovating the barn into my studio I want to prepare for the possibility of only having a workbench in our living room and having limited access to all the equipment that I have here now Before I end this video, uh, I wanted to add a little side note about planning. I'm not sharing this because I think you should be more productive or any of it. Because I really believe that being bored and doing nothing and taking care of yourself is very important. And I often make the mistake of wanting to do it all and set goals that are just unreachable. So that's why making a plan definitely helps me to stop doing that <laughs> and notice that there is no time left in my schedule for 
myself and my family. So once I notice that, I can adjust it. It also helps me to focus because the time that I spend working, if I want to be able to have an income from that time, I have to be very focused and know what I'm doing. So that was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. Uh, I will see you very soon. Bye.